The Spirit dances in the water, waiting in baptism to join us in the fire of God's love. Come to the waters. Come to the Spirit. Come to the journey of a lifetime, a journey through death to life everlasting. Well, good morning or afternoon, whenever you're viewing this. And uh, uh, welcome to our January 9th service. Happy New Year, our first service for the new year. And uh, uh, thank you for excusing me on a little break, a little holiday I had there, and uh, very appreciated. And so I uh, just want to welcome you all that is joining us in this manner. Unfortunately, we're not gathered. Uh, the COVID numbers being what they are, uh, the prudent thing to do was to again suspend gatherings at Trinity. And, and so all groups are suspended, uh, actually even, even including uh, the group we're going to have come in and take down the Christmas decorations this week. So, so if you are going to help out with that, uh, please just uh, stay home. We have a, a couple of designated volunteers that have to take it on all on their own. But again, we, we want to stay true to uh, our mandate of, uh, of just cancelling all group gatherings. Uh, and of course, that, that speaks to Sunday school as well. So uh, uh, again, we'll, you'll have to wait till future notice, further notice about when we're going to be uh, ready to proceed as, with that as well. So there's a board meeting on Tuesday night. Um, the, the board will discuss, get a little more clarity on exactly what and how we're going to proceed moving forward. This includes the choir virtual recordings, what we're prepared to do there. And, uh, and then we'll communicate that decision at that time. I'd like to just take a moment, quick moment to acknowledge the territory that uh, we worship on. I mean, for thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. And their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and their spirituality. We are gathered on Treaty 2, the traditional homeland of the Dakota, the Anishinaabek, the Ojibwe, the Oji Cree, the Cree, Dene, and home of the Métis Nation. And we acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing of God's glory and strength. God calls us over the waters and strengthens us for the journey. Sing praises to Christ. Sing of Christ's healing and love. The, the waters of our baptism cleanse us, renewing our spirits and nursing our wounds. Sing praises to the Spirit. Sing of the Spirit's comfort and hope. The flames of the Spirit are like a refiner's fire purifying the soul to the glory of God. Our first hymn today is How Firm a Foundation from Voices United number 660. Please join us in the singing of this hymn.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Source, Source of, of love and, and mercy, as, as we, we enter, enter a new year in the life of this church, church may our, our love for you be made known in our love for one another. another. Help, Help us leave old grievances and former arguments, arguments behind as, as we, we open our hearts, hearts to the possibilities that lie before us. us. Guide, Guide our, our footsteps, footsteps into the glory of your ways, that, that we may live as you created us to be. be. Beloved children, crowned with glory and honor, may our worship reflect the greatness of our calling and the honor of our heritage. Amen. Like I said earlier, it's uh, the first service of the year, and so Happy New Year. And uh, with new, a new year comes new beginnings. And uh, we have uh, a video by the skit guys called Exactly That, A New Year and New Beginnings. Please enjoy the video. All right, listen up, boys. The ribs are gonna be on the smoker. Debbie's making her world-famous lemon squares. And neither one of you bums have yet to RSVP to my New Year's Eve party to watch the ball drop. Watch the ball drop? Yeah. When in the last millennium have you stayed up past 7.30, old man? <laughs> and besides that, did you get those ribs approved by your cardiologist? I did. He's bringing the hot links. Sure, yeah. So he can charge you for another stint. And by the way, not that it's any of your beeswax. But the Queen and I, we have plans for later today. Ooh. Look, I don't mean to be spilling tea here, but your wife does not need to be on the back of a Harley Davidson. Some wigs just don't look good in a helmet. <laughs> we're taking the Toyota. Oh, yeah. And we're going to the cemetery to wish a Happy New Year to our real friends, because that's where all of them are, including the fourth leaf to our lucky clover. Domino, Domino Dan. 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 Uh, playing baseball with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Dan always came to my New Year's parties every year. Mm. I didn't even have to invite him. He just came. Unlike the two of you. I used to ring in the New Year with a bang. I did. So I had big thoughts of better and more. <laughs> I'd say to myself, maybe this year will be different. Huh. You ever have that year, boys? You know, the one where everything went right. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Tell you what I did run into was God. And his mercies. They are new every morning. That's what the good book says, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a do-over. Every day is a do-over. That's what New Year's is to me. It is a gift from God of 365 new beginnings. Now, who don't want that? Amen. Our scripture reading today is Luke 3, verses 15 to 17, and then 21 and 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Baptism of Jesus. Now when all of the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved, 
and you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So John the Baptist is in the scripture reading again. I mean, we, we heard from him all Advent, and, uh, and here we are, the season of Epiphany, and uh, here we've got him again. In fact, if those verses 15 to 17 seem familiar, those exact verses were used in Advent 3. So, uh, um, and so, if, yeah, if it sounds like, seems like deja vu to you, uh, don't worry, it, it is a repeat. And, uh, but this time it's used to, you know, specifically just for the purpose of setting up verses 21 and 22, the baptism of Christ. And, uh, and as this Sunday is known as baptism of Christ Sunday. So anyways, just, just a quick recap, recap of those verses, 15 to 17. Uh, you know, a couple of key things in that. There's the differentiation between John and Jesus. Because people were thinking that John was the Messiah, and, uh, and, jo- and John sets them straight. And, and uh, because he just says that, uh, you know, all, he will baptize them with water, but Jesus will baptize them with spirit and fire. And, and it can also be interpreted as wind and fire. And uh, because wind and fire is, uh, is the symbols of the Holy Spirit, you know, the powerful presence of God, but it's also, there's a message of judgment in there. And, uh, and like I spoke about, you know, back on December 12th, you know, farmers used to pour wheat, you know, from one container to another on a windy day or, or toss the wheat in the air with a, with a fork or winnowing fork is the term in the scripture uh, to, so that the chaff would be, you know, blown away and then they, just the grain would fall into a pile on, on the ground. And, uh, and, uh, and so this would be leaving, the chaff would be gone and the grain would be clean. And, uh, and the key thing that's noted in there is that if ignited, that, that chaff burned with explosive combustion. And so uh, the message of that story, though, is, is that when repentance and forgiveness are available, judgment is good news because the primary aim is to save the wheat and not to burn the chaff. And so this, this passage does not mean Jesus is coming to send you to hell, all right? It's, 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 it's not about separating the saved from the unsaved. It's, it's, it's about separating within us the chaff that needs to be burned away so that the wheat of our lives may remain. So then we jump to verses 21 and 22, the baptism of Jesus. And, and it's important to get this context from 15 to, seven, 15 to 17 uh, because John baptizes the one, you know, as it quotes in there, he, that is not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. And, uh, and, and there's, a, there's a reference in there in their, in their culture. I mean, it's the lowest slave in the household, probably one that was in trouble, that was the one that was in charge of, you know, removing the guest sandals and washing their feet. It, it's considered the lowest of the low job. And so John is saying, this is how I am. I'm not even worthy to do that to the real Messiah. And so there's some interesting differences in, in Luke's telling of, uh, of the baptism of Jesus. Now, now Matthew and Mark have the, the, the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus like a dove as he's coming up out of the water. But in Luke, the Holy Spirit comes while Jesus prayed after he was baptized. There's a a sort of a a lapse in time here. There's There's a separation between the baptism and this Holy Spirit coming to him. And, uh, and that kind of aligns with uh, today's Acts reading as well. And, but, all, but all three versions agree that ca- God calls Jesus beloved son and is well pleased with him. So again, I want to keep that, that separation between baptism and Holy Spirit, and I'm going to come around to that. But, but I, first I want to ask the question is, you know, why is Jesus being baptized? I mean, does Jesus need to be baptized? 
You know, there's all these theologies about, you know, the reason, you know, behind baptism, about, you know, cleansing from original sin, you know, that all, that all babies are born, you know, with this original sin, and baptism is, is needed to be, to cleanse them from that. And, you know, um, you know for the record, I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of the whole original sin concept. Uh, personally, I just think that's, you know, Augustine sort of laying his baggage on, on the sin of sex, his own, his own issues around that. But uh, so, I mean, you know, does, does Jesus need to de- be cleansed of original sin? You know, does Jesus need forgiveness? You know, some other theologies around baptism. Now, the United Church of Canada's uh, theology on baptism, and coming right from the 20 Articles of Faith, is baptism with water into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is the sacrament by which are signified and sealed our union to Christ and participation in the blessings of the new covenant. That's why we baptize. To, for, for this, this you know, we, don't, we don't baptize as an expectation of God. God expects us to be baptized. No. Um, we don't do it to, as, as a special you know, p- rite of passage into a, into a club that allows us into a heaven. No, we, we, we baptize to connect us to Christ and receive the blessings of that connection. And so Jesus didn't get baptized for God or for himself. He got baptized for us so that we could share with him this special covenant. You see, Jesus' entire life was not about how he was above everyone else, but how he could relate to anyone else. I mean, just look back at the humility of Jesus. And, you know, and it's great starting right from the Christmas story that we, we've all just heard. I mean, Jesus' parents weren't royalty, right? I mean, Jesus could have been born into Herod's palace. No, he wasn't. Or to one of the religious leaders. He could have been raised in the temple. You know, he could have been, you know, in a rich family. But no, he was born into a a poor family. I mean, it describes uh, Joseph as a carpenter, but the, the, the actual accurate translation just means that he was a laborer. You know, he got paid to do whatever physical work that he could get. You know, and he was born in a stable. You know, not in a fancy place, in a fancy house or a palace. Or, you know, he was, he was born in a stable. In fact, Hank, who you met on, on Christmas Eve, Hank the Herald, uh, I mean, he would tell you that uh, they, they found the baby Jesus laying in a goat trough, Right? Jesus, you know, and his parents, they, they escaped to Egypt as ref- refugees. You know, and then as he grew up, he probably started as a common laborer himself. You know, he recruited fishermen for his ministry. You know, not, not theological experts, not, not you know, uh, priests from the temple. No, he recruited fishermen. You know, and they're pretty, pretty low on the social scale. You know, he tended to dine with the outcasts of society. And the list just goes on and on. I mean, Jesus was an everyday guy for everyday people. And this is the humility of Jesus. And he understands you because he lived like you. Actually, probably worse. He grew up in a lot greater hardships than you and I ever did. And this is why he's baptized. So that we could get, can continue that connection that we are all friends together. No matter what your perception of self, no matter how tough things are, how low you feel, Jesus is not an elitist beyond your grasp. But he intentionally inserts himself and demonstrates that he's the most humble servant waiting to serve you.
Thanks be to God. Let's sing our next hymn from uh, Voices, or More Voices, 161. I have called you by your name. Please join us in the singing of this hymn. Our Minutes for Mission today is called A Better World, One Water Project at a Time. Now, according to UNICEF, more than half of the global population does not have access to safe sanitation and 2.2 billion, that's with a B, 2.2 billion people still lack access to safe drinking water. Now today, you know, the baptism of Jesus Sunday, I mean, this is a good day to consider our relationship with water. I mean, how many Bible stories do you know that have water in them? You know, many of us have heard the story of Moses making water flow from a rock or, or parting the Red Sea. You know, we may remember stories about Jesus turning water into wine or walking on water and, and, and calming it as well. And so often, water is the focal, uh, focal point of God's miracles and grace. And it figures prominently because it's necessary. Clean water is essential to life. And yet around the world, people suffer for the lack of it. The issues are complex. I mean, climate change is altering weather and weather patterns causing shortages and droughts in some areas, while floods in others. And in some parts of the world, a growing population means rising demand, and there, there isn't enough water to go around. Water infrastructure problems sometimes mean people can't access water even when it's available. There are racial and gender implications to accessing water as well. I mean, did you know on average, that women in, and children in the global south walk nearly six kilometers to access water and carry nearly 19 liters of water every day. Through mission and service, you help provide solutions to water issues worldwide. Your generosity supports irrigation projects and provide uh, accessibility to water. Your gifts help construct boreholes, wells, and rain catchment tanks, which in turn address food, scarce, food security and sanitation issues in communities. During crisis, your gifts help deliver drinking water where it's needed most. 
In the midst of the global pandemic, your support is helping to construct sanitation stations and share life-saving hygiene communications through flyers and radio programs. Thank you for your generosity. And together we can build a better world, one water project at a time. Now, uh, as we, you know, have finishing up the book, so to speak, for 2021, um, we raised, Trinity United Church raised almost $15,000 for MS last year. And, and so, and that's, and that's fantastic. And, and thank you so much for your support. You know, unfortunately, it was about 3,000 short of our target, but uh, new year and, uh, and a new attempt. And so I'd like you to keep this, this, this thought about clean water for half the world, um, because when your m and dollars are at work at that, I mean, you are literally saving lives. So we thank you for the ways you support Trinity United and Alexander United Church. We pre appreciate your support of both your, your time, your talent, as well as your treasure. And, you know, in, in thankfulness to God, you know, uh, let us offer this prayer. Mighty One, your voice is powerful, shaking the wilderness and stripping the forest bare. Speak words of blessing upon our offering this day, that nothing may hinder the good our gifts may do in your name. Give strength to your people through the gifts we bring before you, that all may know the glory of your spirit through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. As we move into our time of prayers of thanksgiving and intercession, um, I just want you to think uh, in this time, uh, we've had such a brutal cold week this past week, really since Christmas. Um, and so I'd like to draw your attention to those people um, right in our own community that uh, might not have you know, appropriate accommodation, might not have appropriate clothing for the cold. Um, I'd like you to also you know, just keep in your minds and your hearts the people in your lives, your family, your loved ones, others in the community, others in the world, and, and lift them up in prayer at this time. So let us pray. God of time and eternity, as this new year stretches before us, we thank you for the time you give us and for all those things that are still possible and precious in this gift. We thank you for each new day and its possibilities, for each night its rest and reflection. We thank you for words of forgiveness and the chance to make a new start for word of invitation to explore new opportunities. Give us the courage to try something new and the conviction to finish things left over from last year. Make time spent this year our time, O oh God. Bless our time with you. God of moments and memories, we remember before you people facing hard times in the months ahead. We pray for those struggling with illness and for those facing treatment or surgery with uncertain results. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of dear ones and for all who remember what used to be but can no longer be. Make time spent this year your time, O oh God. Bless our time with you. God of hopefulness and helpfulness, we remember those who are seeking new opportunities this year. Those training for new employments and those looking for work, those developing new businesses and seeking the right employees, and those who provide services to improve life in our communities amid the uncertainties around us. Give us wisdom and perseverance in what we undertake as a congregation. In the face of all the changes in our community, make time spent this year your time, O oh God, Bless our time with you. As we work together with the vision of your kingdom before us this year, fill us with love and generosity that can change the world because of your blessing. We pray we can make a difference in even the most challenging situations because we are the people of your beloved Son who taught us to pray together and we celebrate that you are our mother and you are our Father who art in heaven. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our last hymn today is from Voices United, number 376, Spirit of the Living God. Please join us in the singing of this hymn. Well, as our service comes to a conclusion, uh, I just want to thank you again for joining us for worship today. And uh, again, just a shout out for the people ha uh, helping out. Uh, Carol and Ken Winston are back uh, helping with the video and sound. We missed them in their holiday and uh, we, uh, we're excited to have them here again. Uh, Davis is filling in on the, uh, on the, on the piano. Uh, appreciate him uh, coming short notice. And, uh, and we also had uh, Shirley and Barb uh, helping with the singing and the reading and so uh, I thank you the support of this this community and these people here today and uh, wish you all the blessings as we go go forth please join me in the benediction go forth and proclaim the good news God calls us by name and fashions us for glory we go as people washed clean in the waters of our baptism Go forth and live the good news. The Holy Spirit blesses us and seals us in God's love. We go as people blessed by God that we might be a blessing to others. Amen. Amen.